Good evening and welcome. We start with the big story this hour, the results of the Oxford-AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine trials. They are out. Phase 1 and 2 of the vaccine has been successful. As per the UK-based medical journal Lancet, the vaccine is considered to be safe, well-tolerated and immunogenic. 70% of the people had headaches or fever after the vaccine was administered to them. Researchers say that these symptoms were managed very easily with paracetamol and no serious adverse reaction was recorded during the trial. The trial was conducted on 1,077 people. The Oxford study has successfully completed phase one and two of the vaccine trials. Now the phase three of the vaccine trials will be conducted on children and people of diverse ethnicities. The Oxford vaccine can train the immune system, making antibodies and white blood cells that can fight coronavirus. The vaccine development by the university's Jenner Institute is being supported by the UK government and AstraZeneca, which uh, will support the production phase. The vaccine is based on a weakened version of the common cold that causes infections in chimpanzees, and it also contains the genetic material of the spike protein of SARS-CoV-2, the strain of coronavirus that causes the COVID-19 illness. Currently, there are more than 100 vaccines being developed and tested around the world. We are on correspondent Stuart Smith is joining us live from London for more on this story. Good evening to you. Thanks for being with us. Now, this is very encouraging. Just how big is this development of this vaccine passing the first two phases? Well, it's almost unrivaled globally. The US and China have also entered human trials, but not yet gained, uh, received the same results like this. This is a very good sign because, as you said, it's both seen to be safe and it works, producing not just uh, antibodies, but also white blood cell T cells, they're called. And that was the purpose of the vaccine, to create both antibodies and T cells. And indeed, this is only the phase one trial results, uh, with only a thousand people from patients in UK hospitals in April and May. They are uh, undergoing phase two and three trials to make sure that these results uh, are, are uh, consistent within a larger and broader population. Those are ongoing in Brazil and South Africa, both to make sure that the uh, virus is safe and works in a broad variety of different people, but also because the UK's rate of infection got down to a point so low that it would take forever to uh, find out whether the phase one, two and phase three trials have been successful. So unfortunately, they had to go to a location uh, where the rate of infection is much greater, such as Brazil and South Africa. And Stuart, now with this next stage of testing, stage three, that includes both children and diverse ethnicities, how long is it expected to take for this phase to be completed and for the results to be released? Yeah, that's the important question, isn't it? The researchers on the trial say that we could expect results at the earliest late August, possibly going into September. But the big factor that affects that the most is simply how many people are exposed to this, vac to this vaccine in the remaining time. So a bit of a funny situation where if people in the countries uh, who are given the vaccine, if those countries are experiencing a high rate of infection, will get results quicker. Of course, no one wants that, but that is uh, the case. So the more people that are exposed to it, the quicker it gets. What then becomes the next question is how this vaccine gets out to people. The UK has already uh, pre-ordered the first 30 million doses of this vaccine. The United States, 400 million. The European Union, 400 million. But also India, Serum Institute, has pre-ordered a billion doses of this vaccine, some to go to Indians, but also there's an agreement there with AstraZeneca, the UK pharmaceutical company, that some of those doses that have been pre-ordered for India will make their way to low and middle income countries as well. Mm -hmm. On that point, of course, the race is on to find an effective vaccine and parallel to this race is to monopolize it. How does one expect to resolve the situation with limited manufacturing for such a large global population who will need it? Yeah, the big question, because, of course, the, the richest countries tend to be able to get their hands on these doses first. Many countries pre-ordering all different types of vaccines, some betting on the UK one, some on the US, some on the China, some countries betting on all of them just in case. There is one, uh, some sort of charity alliance called the Gavi uh, and Sepi Alliance. They've ordered 300 million doses of the vaccine, and their express aim is to try and get doses of this vaccine, should it be found to be successful, out to developing countries around the world, those that cannot afford to take the risk 
uh, in investing in a vaccine which may actually end up not working. Of course, they'll know more about that by the time we get to September. But it is a big problem. How is it fairly done? And the UK government does say it wants to see the vaccine get out to everywhere. And they have uh, given funding to these two charities, Gavi and CEPI, to try and help this vaccine get to developing countries should it, fa should it be found uh, to be safe and working. Stuart, thank you very much for that update.